I'm gonna throw this probably throw this up at some point during the uh Boom. Po- the podcast here. <laughs> there we go. I like that already. You know. <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna flash my buddy here, two, two Indians too, because uh, Brian was on the ground there. He got a press pass from Moto America. Smart thinking on his part, and uh, dude, he was doing a bunch of cool stuff there. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this week on uh, After Hours, featuring Riding Fish, me, myself, Curtis, oops, Curtis Sawyer, Jesus, I'm all off. Okay, hang on. <laughs> Well, Why don't you take it over? Okay, so we were going to do this in kind of impromptu show, and now we really know that this is unrehearsed and unscripted because that was right. just that, that bordered on horrible. But he's my Fair buddy. Not. That's Riding Fish. This is Indian Rider Radio After Hours. So glad to have you guys. And we are now right on the heels of the King of the Bangers event. And let me introduce to you a group of guys we're going to talk with about the race, what it means for Indian motorcycle, what it means going forward. First, of course, Riding Fish. He is my co host, and uh, happy to have you along, sir. Uh, big day in fantasy football for you. Yes. Um, yeah, a lot of, yeah. lot of football going on. I got calls coming in. I got lineups to make. And then, of course, I was at the casino last night betting on some football. So, <sighs> I've tried to raise you better. I did. You know. Listen, I'm going to be honest. My hype level after this race was so high, I wasn't going to sleep anyway. So I might as well go <laughs> do something, you know, that's all. Well, let's then plug in over here on my right, and that is Cal Craner. Calvin, glad you could be on the show with us today. Calvin sure. is a, yeah, a former customer of ours, uh, of mine, and um, still in eastern Idaho, and one hell of a motorcycle enthusiast. And as he put it when I reached out to him, I don't know anything about racing. I don't know anything about this, but boy, I'll try this. Okay, trial by fire, my friend. Here you are. Right um, on, yeah. Winter's rolling into east Idaho, too, yeah? It is, yeah. We just got snow last night, so we're supposed to have warmer temps this weekend. Maybe it'll go away and we'll get another ride or two in, but uh, not looking good so far. I was just through your area in a time when probably the weather was better than it ever had been, man. I'm telling you, it was just gorgeous up there. Gorgeous temps. All right, well, sit tight. We'll be right back. And Larry from the V-Twin blog. Larry, welcome to the show, man. We're so glad to have you. I'm glad you could drop in with us this morning. Hey, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Fred hit me up. Uh, little while ago and asked me if I'd do the show and um, had a few other things going on, but I dropped what I was doing to, to make sure I made the show here. Well, as long as you didn't make a mess of dropping everything, we're happy to have you. Glad you're here, Larry. And on uh, <laughs> my other guest, this is my son-in-law, Tito Ceballos. Now, Tito is the GM at Pikes Peak Indian Motorcycle and a performance enthusiast and has probably spent more time in front of a drag specialties representative than anybody cares to because those guys are always showing up at the catalog. Tito, welcome. Thanks for dropping by this morning. Yeah, I'm glad to be on, man. I was excited about the race. Excited to talk about it today. Well, let's start about. Let's start with you. For uh, you guys had a dealership watch party, didn't you? We did. Yeah, we got all set up um, there at the shop. Uh, it was a good time. You know, we got everyone everyone together, and that was a crazy race. <laughs> but the, the the point being is uh, the reason I mentioned that, and you might have heard some of the guys talking yesterday with a during the coverage about. <clears throat> Now, this has reached a different kind of guy. This is not the regular guy who watches Moto America racing, right? And uh, one of the things he pointed out is that dealerships were having dealership watch parties and vendors were having watch parties. Uh, Tito, it's got to create a lot of excitement at that level because this is a bike that most of us can go out and just buy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. There's a a lot of hype there, man. I I was checking out the Indians and the Harleys. All the new accessories that you see on those bikes, I was just chomping at the bit, man. I was, I was hitting my rep up the whole time. When, when are these coming out? When can I get all this? Because <laughs> I know there's going to be a lot of a lot of people coming and asking questions. Yeah, but you're a performance junkie to begin with, so I think that kind of goes without saying, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was looking at those bikes a lot closer. I think most people do. Okay, so now, Cal, you're still riding a Scout, Calvin, right? I do. Yep. Yep. <laughs> But what did you see in watching this? What, what was your first take when you heard about it? And then what was the result when you saw the race? What did you think after the fact? So when I originally heard about the race, it was mostly excitement just to see where we at, we're actually going to stand. I mean, we had some other comparisons with uh, uh, Hart um, and uh, 
doing his when the challenger came out doing his videos and a lot of people are like oh it's rigged they're just doing it you know to to make it look good and this was the, really the opportunity to see putting somebody in the seat and you know some performance after market parts to really see what it really could do compared to the competition that's and that's what it was i was really excited about just to see where it was actually going to land actually putting the pedal to the metal and, and uh, pushing it to the limits well i just i mean you guys can chime in anywhere you like but larry let's go to you real quickly Overall, this is probably one of the things that has created the biggest buzz in the last little while regarding motorcycle racing, especially this category, and V-twin racing in particular. What, what's your take? Take it. It's great for the, for the industry in a, as a whole, but, um, you know, as I'm, I'm assuming we all ride Indians. Um, <laughs> and uh, as, as a brand lover and owner, man, this is this is just another notch on the belt. Uh, if you, you look at F, you look at flat track racing, um, and now you look at this, um, Indians taking butt and taking names, man, just across well, the but, board. Yeah, but but the whole point I think wasn't necessarily to rub Harley Davidson's nose in it as much as I think it was an opportunity. And if we were listening closely to the guys talking yesterday during the the broadcast. It was you know, drawn up on a cocktail napkin, right? And they started talking about the idea, but then when you realize that you could take these bikes that have, have been so, well, I mean, there's a lot of them in a lot of garages, right? But then you go to the next level and you say, okay, we're going to get guys like SNS and Roland Sands and Vance and Hines and all, Bassani and all these people involved. Now, all of a sudden, you're taking some of the best performance aftermarket stuff, some of the coolest bikes out there right now, mashing them together and putting them in front of people. I don't think this could be anything but good. Yeah? Right. Okay. Well, I mean, what are you thinking? Well, I think I think that one of the great things about this is it does a couple things. One is it helps Moto America and it helps Moto GP racing, right? You got all these guys that have been in baggers for all these years, and you know what? Some of us never rode sport bikes, and some of us never rode super bikes, or we did when we were younger, and now our life's a lot different. So now it brought a whole class of people that don't normally watch racing. I don't know about you guys, but I was tuned in all weekend. I, from the from the practice sessions and then hey now i got it i'm watching these other guys i'm watching the junior events running theirs i'm watching some of the was a heritage they had some heritage race or whatever i watched a little bit of that and so it brought me to the table of a guy i wouldn't have watched at all so it helps them it helps us did you see the same thing with the blog larry were people starting to respond with the idea of, of now being able to maybe get exposed to what a Moto America does? Because unless you're a fan of Cameron Bobier or some of those other cats, you pay zero attention to those guys, right? I mean, you guys know that we don't ride sport bikes to that level. Uh, I will throttle the shit out of my Sportster or my Springfield and that kind of thing. You'll bet the world on that. That guy built it over there and it's crazy. Um, but it, what I'm getting to is I think that this brought a whole new audience to everything. Calvin, you in on that? I mean, you I, No, yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. I, Never really looked into Moto America, never really watched other races. But no, yeah, now that we have this going on and getting other people involved, like Fish is saying, it's I'm watching a little bit of everything else too, just to see what, what the comparisons. And they talk about the difference between the baggers and the sport bikes and and uh, and why you can and can't do certain things on, on ones and what makes it actual an actual sport, you know. Oh, absolutely. And, and Larry, the, the blogs had to light up when this thing got announced back in July. Come on. It had to, it had to be big news. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I, you can, you can even go to my blog site and, um, and just look at the views on my different, yeah. on, on the different articles that I have. You could see where, where the certain posts will light up. Uh, King of the baggers is one of them. Um, <laughs> the King, so it's, it's funny because I get light ups for King of the baggers, uh, Oddly enough, new helmets that come out and American flat track. Um, so there's, yeah. there, is a, there is a market for, I think, the people who haven't been, who, aren't, who don't traditionally watch racing yeah. are watching racing in America now. Um, and this King of the Baggers, hopefully it's the new flat track, or it does as well as American flat track has. Well, Tito, you chime in on this because, again, part of this whole venue, and, and you would know because you spent, you spent so much time um, his internet connection to have the same problem mine is. We have a snowstorm going on here in Colorado Springs, so bear with us. Um, but Tito, you've been an aftermarket guy forever. I mean, you, you know the catalogs inside and out. You've watched performance pieces get 
you know, more and more developed. And the, one of the arguments that was made when this first thing came around, when people started talking about it was, uh, this is just a, an SNS prank. This is, um, you know, finding a way to, to, you know, create new aftermarket stuff. But I really think that this is, was the opportunity that pl- people like SNS in particular were looking for to really create a performance package for that motorcycle. What's your feel? Yeah, no, they um, they definitely lived up to to the hype of S and S. I mean, S and S has been known for performance for years, and this was their opportunity to show that um, they can do it. You know, that these baggers they can bring them to that next level. And they'd already been developing things for the Challenger um, that hadn't been released yet, and this was their time to really show what they can do with that bike. And and one of the things that S and S has always been known for is. They'll build the components, but they'll build them to work all together. So they sell it initially like a, or offer it as a package, right? That's one of their things that they've done for years. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. There'll be, there'll be kits coming out. Uh, I was already, I, I was already, I said, I was already talking about Rev, wondering when that exhaust is going to come out. Um, I heard they did uh, some new cams, high compression pistons. Yeah. Uh, now it's just a, really the, the main thing that's, I think, holding back the aftermarket industry with the Challenger is that you can't get them unlocked. Right. Um, you can't you can't get into them so that you can tune them the way they need to be tuned. Um, and Polaris has been very strict with uh, just keeping that stuff very secretive, and I, I don't understand why. Um, but I guess they just don't don't want that technology getting out. Well, but keep in mind you're you're, you're talking about a bike that they yeah they they wanted to get some of these things done first. I think. I mean. You don't spill all the beans in the first wave, and you know as well as I do. And, and, and Tito, speaking from experience, because these guys are a performance shop. They've got a dyno set up there. I mean, they, you tore apart a Challenger just to see how it was built, for Christ's sake. I mean, you weren't <laughs> screwing around. There was nothing wrong with the damn bike. You took it apart. I don't know. Really, I swear to you gotta, God. You got to look at it from the inside, man. It's, it's, it's like taking apart a toaster, hoping that I can figure out how it makes the, to- the, the, the bread brown. Come on, man. What are you doing? God. I'm going right. to say this, Tyler yeah. O'Hara did 128 miles an hour. So yeah, somebody gave him some yeah. information. That was his high, 128. Yeah. And Freddie Garcia did 122. <laughs> so uh, mine stops at like 111. So there's something that was done. Uh, <laughs> well, well, I think Indian was directly involved with s to to right. do that. So that's, they probably gave him the key to the, you know, to the box there so that they can do something. Well, but think about well, it, guys. But you know, I don't mean to interrupt, but the, the thing here is, is that during time trials, he was four seconds faster. And on Laguna Seca, four seconds, you can have a cup of coffee and order lunch before the next guy gets across there. That track is unforgiving. And if you've got that big a gap, you're going to crush the house. But it looks to me like, and Larry, uh, you can speak to this and anybody else. Indian and SNS said, look, I don't care if this turns into a, a garage build. We're not going to do it that way. We're going full tilt. We're going to find out just how badass we can make this motorcycle. And they crushed it. Crushed it. Cal, you've, oh. you've done some upgrades on your scout. You know what it's about. When you start working on those things, you want to see just how far they'll go, right? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. How far, how fast, how, how far over I can go. Yep, yep. Hey, speaking of which... This is something that I, I got directly from Tyler. Um, guys, he, they measured his body, his feet, his legs, everything, to where they were going to mount the actual riding setup, okay? Ergonomically, they built the bike for him, all right? Not the case for some of these other guys, but if you look at the photographs really closely, anything, especially those high-resolution ones that Moto America took, the bike fits him like a glove. They built the bike to fit him. And I didn't see that, like, with Gilliam's bike. Now, he looked like he was a little bit big for it. Did, is, am I wrong? Did, did, did he look a little like he was kind of squashed into the motorcycle a little bit? And a couple of the other guys that were racing, uh, Garcia being one, he was too big for his ride. They should have rearranged the ergonomics on that. I think this is, I think this is a long-term picture of what we're seeing here, is that Indian is going to push the envelope as far as they can with this bike or something similar, and if they're going to get into this and it's going to turn into what I think it is, and that's going to be a race series in Moto America, you don't, you, they went to the drawing board and built the, the prototype first. Hey, Larry, what were you going to say, boss? Oh, I was going to say you and I, actually you and I were on a, uh, a, on a YouTube live stream 
uh, we were just, we were on the, the uh, uh, chat portion of it, uh, oh, talking to a couple, yeah, writing Tall's chat, uh, live stream talking about performance baggers. And we were, we were trumpeting the Indian, Indian brand with a bunch of Harley guys. And um, actually, I, I'm trying to remember, um, uh, Ride Bill Repeat um, was saying that there's nothing out there for the Indians. And I think we were both kind of just, you know, wiggling in our chairs going, yeah, there is, but it's just right. not, you don't hear about it yet, but you will. Yeah. And uh, these Indians are, are, are legit. I mean, what we're seeing with, like you, you said, uh, Curtis, what, what we're seeing with s and um, what we're seeing with even Lloyd's out in, out in uh, uh, North Carolina. Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're seeing things on, and, 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 I, and I'm pushing India because Indian pushes Harley, right? And then Harley pushes back and pushes Indian some more. So all we're going to see is, is great things coming out of races, and, we're gonna, and it's going to trickle down to us as the riders, we can get these performance parts, um, you know, we're, we're, Tito, you're hinting at, they may be available now or soon. You know, we're going to see that stuff. And I think that's great. That's, that's great for everybody. Well, when, I, yeah, but when we talk about regular racing, I mean, most, most of it is sport biker. It's so, become so specialized that it's really removed from anything that we're familiar with on a day-to-day, -day, right? Uh, I can't go out, for example, I don't have an inline four in the garage that runs, so I can't go out and buy a set of pistons and rings and hope to do something that I can put on the street. But some of this stuff will actually trickle down to people who can actually use it. Well, these are things that we can do to our motorcycles. That was unheard of in the past. I mean, when you talk about, when you talk about Moto America at its highest level, and some of these guys like Bouvier and some of those other guys, those are factory built motors, bikes, frames, everything is... A, a little bit removed from anything you're going to find in the showroom, but these are not that far away. I think that's huge. I, I'm going to say one thing, Tito. You made a good point about the having the key to the having the key to the computer. Um, as far as I can see, Freddie Garcia has a bone stock Challenger, and it's just unlocked. Yeah. And he did 122 miles an hour at one. Like I was saying earlier, at one point. I mean, he, he came in third, and he was going against uh, – who was it? I forget. One of the guys had a supercharged 107. Yeah, he, had the, right. he had a 107 supercharged. There was multiple 131s. There's a couple of twin cams that have been built up. And um, Gilman, that Vance and Hines street glide, does that – by the way, does that end the street glide, road glide fight? I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it, it really wasn't close. But – but Harley Davidson did team up with them. It's kind of how Indian did with S and S, yeah. and um, they did put the one, the new one thirty one in that bike. Um, okay. And then they ran, they ran it chain driven, and and I'm sure they changed with the gearing a little bit and sprockets or whatever. But yeah, I just it was it was incredible. But my point of all that was Freddie Garcia took third in an unlocked Challenger, and that was it. Yeah. You know, and the S and S had cams, and it was. It was way faster. Wait, I did an unofficial time count when he came back out of the sand. Anybody that saw that part? Yeah. When, when O'Hara came out the sand, it, about, it took about a half a lap. There was a point where I counted. The old school, they get to a point, and then you get to the point, right? So he won 1,000. He was four seconds back behind, in third place from, from first place, and he was able to catch him in two laps. Well, but yeah, but he was turning times were four, four and a half, almost five seconds faster than the rest of the field all weekend long. I mean, oh, yeah. And that, yeah. that all by itself is huge. You, were, you had something, Cal, were you going to chime in there for a second? Well, you know, and, and, you know, we're talking about, you know, performance parts and what we can do and put on our, our bikes and which, which is all, all great and all, you know, I, I think that's great for, for these guys that are involved to be able to do that and sell to us and make us go faster or whatever we want to do with them. But I, I think part of it also – has a lot to do with being a part of the brand and part of the family, um, which from a guy that doesn't really race or really interested in it. Now we got the king of the baggers. I'm probably missing something else. It brings us, there we go with the, with the racing flag. It brings us together a little bit more as a family and a brand than it does more than just, Hey, let's, let's sell these guys some parts after we race them because we want to make money. It's for, for me, it's bringing us a little bit more together um, and being being proud of what we own, what we ride, and and rooting for somebody on on the track. Uh, uh, from, that's that's a, a, what it's a lot for for me, you know. 
Well, it's it, yeah, it's like living in any town that's got an NFL team. You know, you want to rally yep. around that, you want to be part of, you want to, you know. And I think yeah. I think that's huge too because for a lot of us, um, you want we, we've we've known that we've had a good motorcycle. We just wanted somebody right. to show those guys that are dressed in orange and black to go sit down a little bit. You know what right. I mean? <laughs> yep. Yep. And Tito, let's come back to you now. Drag specialties and and well, drag specialties laid it out on the line. They they rolled the dice with this thing, but you've always had great success with them. You've always been able to, to get the things you need and want from them. Uh, what do you think this is going to do for the industry on the other side at the parts counter? Yeah, man, it's going to blow up um, as soon as they start uh, bringing some of this stuff to 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 us so that we can use. Uh, we're we're going to see a huge increase in I think parts sales, hopefully challenger sales, um, and people that just want to want to do all this. You know, they they it was a very exciting thing to see um, the challenger win and just baggers out there racing. You know, and like you guys were saying, it uh, it got a lot of hype going. Um, everyone's all excited that Indian took the lead, you know, took number one spot. Uh, and I think with drag, you know, as long as we can get parts in, um, <laughs> that's the difficult part right now is with this pandemic going on. Yeah. Um, but once we get through all that, I, th I think it's going to be a good thing. So you, the reason, again, I wanted to have you on is, one, I know that you guys had it on in the dealership, but you are a very much performance guy, and so much so that you're, you know, I mean, you're imaging and branding your dealership as a performance location. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys are looking at some of your own branded stuff, so I think that that's amazing. When we talk about raw performance out of this Power Plus 108, and we talk about what they were doing, I mean, 125, 127 miles an hour through the trap. Are you kidding me? Holy crap. And then maneuvering that thing around Laguna Seca Raceway. We're talking about a, a, an amazing motorcycle to begin with, one that was already built with a different idea in mind. And where do, do you see do you see performance baggers being the long haul? Let me let me back up and, and kind of preface my statement here. We've been watching custom guys now for what last few years, stripping baggers down, making them a little more dirty and gritty, you know, uh, adding putting chain drives on them, like guys did for years with Dinas. Remember, everybody was doing that with the Dinas at one time or another, right? They're putting the chains on. But now I've se I think we're seeing some of that, that, that edgy street performance thing suddenly show up in a motorcycle that lends itself to it, okay? And, and everybody's on board. I mean, this was crazy racing. The kid went out, the guy went out of turn two, dicked around for what? Yeah, like four, four and a half seconds, then goes ahead and just wins the race. Piss on it, I'm done. I got to go, you know. It blows my mind. Where do, where do you, know, you Yeah. Oh, and so you know Tyler had no rear brake for five laps? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's how you win races. You just don't use them. Screw yeah, it. you don't use it. Yeah. Need that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what the smoke was, is he lost his rear brake. And, and it, was his, it was his brake fluid dropping onto his exhaust pipe. Yeah. So, yeah, he, he had no rear brake for five laps. Did you hear that? They, they said that um, the brakes are on, on the baggers – that it's the only time they've ever had to use a rear brake. Like on those on the sport bikes, they don't have to do that. Yeah. So it was a it must have been difficult to try to corner without using that rear brake. Well, yeah, because you're talking about heavier bike, you're talking about a different weight balance. Because most of those guys, are like in, in Moto America, for example, yeah, there isn't even really a, a rear brake is there just because it's you know it's required by you don't use it you use the front all the way to set yourself up so that had to be a hell of a ride and uh, hey anybody watch those guys trying to start those things whole oh, shot no. them popping them up off the ground like that oh. <laughs> yeah that's what i want to do i'm going to go race and the first thing i'm going to do is flip it over freddie <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Oh. yeah he broke he broke the handlebar on his thigh oh when it yeah, Larry, did you see that? So Freddie Garcia, uh, yesterday in warmups, or not? Pardon me, not day yesterday. Before, yeah, yeah. Day before yesterday in warmups, he he tried to do a practice start. He popped a wheelie, ended up shooting out from under him, and he broke the handlebar on his thigh. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't see that. That's <laughs> that stuff a legend right there, man. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He said he woke up every hour on the hour to stretch because he was so he was in so much pain. Then he goes out and races, runs a 
they lost um it seems it seems like most of the baggers found a way to lose around 200 pounds you know give or take um 30 or 40 pounds and that's the harleys and the indians everything i've found but still you're still muscling a, you know a six seven hundred pound motorcycle around for was it 17 miles you know at an average their average pace was like 81 miles an hour <laughs> think right. about that right on that so. track and, and see now it, to compare that so the, you have a point of reference the junior class that races predominantly 400 cc kawasaki's those guys will turn times about the same or a little faster only because they can corner a little tighter but you were talking about motorcycles that are what one two three four, almost four times as heavy going on the racetrack even after stripping off 300 pounds i mean that's crazy that's just nuts larry tell me a little bit more about the v-twin blog i mean you guys have been obviously there's been a lot of buzz on it look at that hello dear happy sunday my sweet well uh, but a lot of guys have been buzzing about this and what was the take was it was it oh this is a stunt is it you know are we just blowing smoke here is this a what is it what was the take as far as guys that were participating with you well, all the, everything's been positive. I mean, okay. there, I actually haven't gotten any of the, the, it's just a stunt or anything like that. People were really excited about this, um, ready to see it. Um, I had to, personally, I had to watch the highlights because of the little one that you just saw that popped uh -huh. into the picture. Yeah. Makes it kind of hard to do stuff at times, but, um, oh, thanks. She took my phone. Uh, <laughs> um, but well, it was yeah. nice having you, Larry. Glad you oh, could thanks. drive. There we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it, the, the reaction has been really positive, man. I think this is going to be something that keep, continues to happen. Um, or I hope it's something that continues to happen going forward. Well, I think too, and, and, and again, I'm, I have Tito here because I wanted to get kind of the dealer's take on what's going to happen at the parts counter. But all, a lot of guys uh, all over the country and all over the world that ride the baggers, whether it's, you know, I came up on Harley Davidson baggers. I had, I don't know how many. And um Although I looked long and hard at the Challenger, I knew I wanted to stick with the old school Thunderstroke and do some of that. But I think that when I first heard about this, I thought, oh, this is one of those things that's going to be like the, the, the halftime show. You know, this is going to be one of those things where it's just going to be, oh, look, we're going to put stickers on everything and we're going to go out and play around on the racetrack. India didn't take it that way. SNS didn't They're take serious. it. That way, right? No, they, they stepped up and went for it, right? I mean, that's Vance and Hines didn't it? Vance and Hines shot at it too. They, oh, no, they, big, yeah. yeah, yeah, they they definitely did. And I'll tell you what, their practice session that was shot live on Facebook had two thousand six hundred people watching at one time. Right. So now, what was the so, last time a Moto America race dragged that many people to the TV? I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah dude, that's does. what I, that's what I'm saying. Halftime show. I think it became the main event. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. Uh, oh, I got. Yeah, so I've heard some, some good racing in all the other classes, and that's, you know, Moto America just does that. But I think it, I think it turned into a centerpiece. Yeah, Larry? Definitely, definitely. And, and Curtis, I have one question. You, you mentioned the Thunderstroke 111, and, the, and I, was, I was actually writing this down, 111, 116. Has anybody heard if they were going to, if that was looked at for this race? Um, because one of the comments, I, or one of the things I caught the announcer saying was, um, they almost kind of hinted at, well, the Indian one because it was it was liquid cooled right. um, versus the air cooled, and so what I'd love to see in the next the next rendition of this is to see a one sixteen go up or a one eleven or you know whatever bikes can oh. get that oomph, yeah. um, and, and I would I mean it would it would tickle me to death if it was uh, Indian one two and three and one of them was was a, was a chieftain. Oh, that would be awesome. Right. Hey Tito, is that even possible? You think a one sixteen built could could rip a power plus? Yeah, I'm training me with a good time. I'll make it happen, Kevin. <laughs> we're gonna start with mine. All right, we're gonna make this thing go. Uh, so we uh, we have thunderstroke. <laughs> yeah, Tito, let's get yours going. Let's get mine going, and then uh, yeah, let's ready. <laughs> I'll come out. I'll come out. Well, I, got a no, I, got a, I have a raceway 10 minutes down the road. Pikes Peak International Raceway is right down the road. Let's do this thing. So, I'll uh, race you to the raceway. <laughs> <laughs> Fred, I got a trailer. That Thunderstroke's all torque, though, man. Um, the, on a track like that, I think it could have done some good because you do got a lot of, um, you know, you got to get up and go after those a lot of corners. 
And that, you know, whenever I'm, I got a 116, and all I have is cams in it, and I'm pushing over 130 torque. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, the, there's still better cams you can put in there. Um, there's still uh, bigger, you know, big board kits that you can put on it. Um, you can definitely pump those numbers up and get it right up there where it's at least competing. Now, whether it's going to take the crown, that's that's tough to say, but um, you can definitely put put the numbers out there that um, that'll keep up. So, what did you? Mine came away when when you finally dynoed my Springfield, and that is the the high flow intake. That is the big bore kit from the factory and a D and D two and one that pumped out one hundred and six point seven on the horsepower side and about one twenty nine, one twenty eight something on the torque side. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing will rip the rubber right off the back of it if I'm not careful, and it will. If I hit if I hit second gear hard or third gear hard, it wants to come up. It does. It's, it says hello, hi. I'd like to go faster now. <laughs> yeah, to to Larry's point, you know, I had heard when um, the Roland Sands team got together, there wasn't an announcement yet on what bike they had, and I heard that first they were gonna go with the Thunderstorm right. motor and a and a That's chieftain. So. Um, yeah, I was surprised that they came out with a Challenger because how amazing would that have been for a motorcycle company, you know, or Indian motorcycle company for them to roll out with two of their bikes. You know, I can, foreseeing the future, foreseeing the future, this is what's going to happen. They're going to come out with a big bore kit for the 116, and they're going to drop that into the next king of the bag. You just watch. I'm just telling you. Yeah. And there, so that way, that's going to be their advertisement. They're going to say, we got the Challenger with cams, the SNS package da, da 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 by the way we got the thunderstroke with oh the new big bore 124 you can pull the sleeve out according according to uh lord gear you can pull the sleeve out just drop a bigger bigger piston and new sleeve in there i think that's how he's doing his big bore kits is that yeah you know, is that right <clears throat> yeah that's how he's doing his he's got a 126 um i think he's currently working on a 134 135 something like that um so they're uh, and that's doing the same thing. Like they, there's so much room in those cylinders that you can go out into the 130s for that big board kit. Um, and that, I mean, that that'd be a monster. And you're, yeah, you're looking but, at. But are you turning it into a bike that's going to grenade every time you rail it hard? I mean, that sounds like, you know. Yeah. And that's the the takeaway there, man. Is that anytime you do more performance to a bike, you're going to lose longevity. Um, 126. I haven't done it to my bike because. I guess I'll be able to go a lot faster, but how long is my bike going to last? Am I going to be going through um, transmissions? Um, you know what I mean? Going through clutches. There's a lot of things that you would have to reinforce uh, to make that work. And I don't see a whole lot of that out there yet. You know, the for Barnett obviously has a clutch but it's kit. Always, but it's always, Tito, you know, it's always the chicken of the egg. Somebody builds the bigger thing and then everybody goes, oh, it broke this, this, and this. Let's go make those now. Exactly. That's what that's what happens. I mean, that's what happened to the factory for crying out loud. They built cool. a 116 big bore kit. They found out guys weren't tuning them right. It was blowing them up motors, a handful of them. That was over exaggerated, but a handful of them. And they they shut the thing down and went back to the drawing board. Now, it makes perfect sense to me that yeah, we're going to build bigger motors. We're going to blow stuff up, and then we're going to find out who's got what and who can build something better. Mm -hmm. Well, look at uh, Gar Garcia just with that unlocked Challenger. Um, they they went through a transmission. They had to change the transmission out um, before race day. <laughs> wow. Well, <laughs> I think it's crazy. I, I mean, you, you had some other facts, figure stats and stuff, uh, Fish. You were looking at – you kind of went through the – the more yeah, kind of you know, I was looking. I was just looking at some of the motors. Multiple 131 Harley Davidsons. The one supercharged 107. They said it was a cool day yesterday. You know, the thing about supercharged, they're a little overheating. Right. Um, and then, of course, it was you know polished imported heads for SNS for the Indian Challenger, and then just the unlocked Indian Challenger. The super bikes. This is what was in, one thing was interesting. The fastest time on a super bike was one minute twenty three seconds. Okay. So that, what would that be? About 13 seconds faster it ends up being about 10 miles an hour average, but for a bike, that's twice the amount of weight. Yeah. Really, we need to go down and say how amazing these riders were. Right. Forget the, 
I'm over here. You give, you could give me that, that O'Hare uh, bike right there. I'll be running three minute laps. <laughs> <Not too long. laughs> but but Kevin, it's, it's true. We watched, we watched guys that have come out of different race classes, uh, similar i mean they probably raced v twins or something similar at one time or another super hooligan super moto some of those things but to put one of those cats on a bike like well gilliam from from the vance and heinz teams had ridden the bike twice before racing it you want to talk about talent off the hook i mean these guys are amazing i mean you're a hell of a rider but these guys make us all look like we haven't even threw a leg not even close not even close. I don't know. And I don't know if you know, Curtis, I actually picked up a challenger this, this year as well. So I got a little bit of understanding on where, where, the, what they're doing with those. Okay. Uh, and I'm a, I'm a small guy, 160 pounds, uh, short as well. But I, I was talking to somebody earlier of, uh, on, uh, on Instagram, a good friend uh, of mine in Texas, and he was all, it's going to be all HD. He's, he's on a bobber too. It's going to be HD. It's going to be HD. He was thinking drag race is what it was going to be. Yeah. And then, but then when he, when he finally got his head wrapped around that, that this is actually going to be more, more technical that, than that, we're actually on a track. It comes down to the, perf- the, the handling of the bike and especially who's on, who's on that motorcycle. And it, he completely changed his mind on what was going to happen with that. He said he thought it was going to be really interesting to see. And, that was, and so that, that's where we're at on, on, on that. You know, it's, it's a totally different game. Oh, I, 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 I think we would agree across the board. We're talking about guys that – are talented, skilled racers, but we're putting them on a machine they've never tried before. And yet, now the guy who did have the most time on the bike was O'Hara. I mean, he spent a lot of time with the motorcycle. Uh, I posted a video of the one that they sent him. Did you guys happen to see that on Facebook yet? It was from back in September when he finally got his the Challenger from the factory delivered to him. He took it out and did some video, and he's out spinning donuts with the thing and, and yeah. throwing it around in the dirt. <laughs> you know, God. But the kid's been, well, he said his, he said his, um, He's had his pro number since 2010, but he raced a long time before that. He coaches young riders. He's uh, been a Daytona 200 winner. I mean, I mean, a lot of t- tons of talent, and that's what's huge. What I was going to point to, though, is that, you know, it does. It, not all these other teams have the kind of money to throw at it that Indian SNS did. And they did, Indian especially, did not go into this thing to see if we're going to make a new exhaust or if we're going to have a little party with SNS. They went in this thing to just see how far they could push this bike. Right. And holy crap, guys. I, mean, I, think, I think this was the cherry on top to the Challenger Challenge. Yes. Let's be honest, yes. right? <laughs> right? The yeah. Challenger Challenge. You come out, you take a Challenger Challenge, you ride it, and you will see what you think. Well, now they said, let's get a sponge. And none of these riders were slouches. Not, right. not, and they were all big time riders in multiple fields of professional riding. And yeah, this is the challenger's challenge right here. And it was two out of the top three. Right. So, yeah. Yep. yeah. But uh, overall, just feedback. Well, what did you think? The racing was exciting. It was actually worth watching. And I think, I think, I'm going to throw this out here for, con, for discussion. If Moto America was not paying attention, and I know for a fact that they were, are we looking at the birth of a new race class? Are we looking at the, at the start of something different and new? Are we looking at a, are we looking at a full blown paradigm shift in bagger motorcycles? My opinion, as long as you still have somebody that wants to race, if, that it'll still, it'll still be there. That's, that's what I'm, I'm, wondering is is will it, it the fans i don't think the fans will really die off unless of course it's just you know one-sided you know which i don't see happening i think it's gonna i think there's gonna be uh, some changes with across the field hopefully other other brands getting in on it if they can but if as long as somebody still wants to race and do it and and perform i think it'll i think it'll keep going yep i would love to see them say we want a bagger class we want a v-twin bagger class and hey yamaha what you got hey honda what you got yeah let's bring it though listen we all know i grew up on on uh yamahas and your bang for your buck is incredible those motors are insane that's what got me to the victory in the indian is that it was a progression and i never lost anything right and that's why i never went two things i want to say quick i just thought about it but that's why i didn't go harley right because i was downgrading in suspension i was downgrading in brakes and in in um the geometry of the weight of the bike high versus low weighted right so that's what got me into the victory and it got me into the indian is i felt like i was still progressing without taking a 
backward step. So I was able to get into the power bagger market without giving up uh, the functionality of the motorcycle. Right. Now I'd love to see Yamaha and Honda and whoever, Kawasaki, BMW, right? Get out there in the next king of the baggers. So, yeah. and then another thing you were talking about, um, uh, Hayden being kind of crammed on a, on a street glide. Yeah. Isn't everybody cl- crammed on a street glide? <laughs> yeah. I mean, unless you're my size. Or, uh, <laughs> yeah. Larry, are we seeing a paradigm shift? I think we are. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely are, man. Um, I, I will say my, you know, my parting words on this thing is, uh, first of all, we all got to keep watching. You know, that's, that's how it's going to happen. Yep. Second of all, as a guy who has been to, a, a, I think, four or five, uh, I keep bringing up flat track because it's just what I've seen. Sure. And I wasn't into racing before that, but I've been to flat track races. I actually brought my wife, who does not like racing at all. And she was like, this is really cool. We got to go back to one. <laughs> um, you, we, we gotta, when this pandemic is over, man, we gotta figure out how to get, we all gotta get to, uh, what, if they keep doing these, we gotta get to one of these and see it live. Watch it on TV. It's cool. Watch on the internet's cool as well. Um, but man, getting firsthand, it, whew, um, smelling that octane is, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. great. Well, I, I think it's time you know, where the, the bagger stops being something for somebody as gray as me. You know, I think it's time that the bagger be Calvin's bike, be Tito's bike, be Fisher's bike, because like you said, it's, you're not stepping back off anything. You know, you're still getting performance. You're still getting a quality machine. You're still getting something that's fun to ride, offers the opportunity for the wife, the girlfriend, whatever to get on the back. But now you don't have to be the one that when that cat rolls up at the stoplight and gives you the look, you don't have to go, well, I'll just let him roll on. I'm going to, no, I can quietly say to myself, I'm going to rip his elbows out, you know, (laughs) just go for it. These are, these are the, I think we can finally put the term geezer glide to rest. Yes. Uh, And it's, thank you. I think we're done with that. So there was a, there was a couple of the racers that said, my dad would be proud. I've never rode a backer before. (laughs) <laughs> that's it, it, it was amazing it was amazing that's great guys fish anything closing shot yeah i want to say uh thank you so much to larry v twin blog anybody my link to his website will be in the description tito dude you're amazing and you guys in the you pikes peak motorcycle colorado springs colorado they're my peeps and there you can see the the spotlight of the dealer when i got to go shoulder to shoulder with big old tito here so there's a reason why he puts the big boy kiss because he's a big dude <laughs> so you can you can you can see that and uh yeah if you're in the colorado springs colorado region go check him out at pikes peak indian yeah i was gonna say the same thing when you if you really want to be guys that not only appreciate the brand not only understand the brand but really want to be your performance house that's your guy right there that's your performance house right there i don't care where you come from where you're going to stop at his place larry the v twin blog is awesome keep on keeping on it's great work i enjoy it calvin go tell uh, christine hi for us and go have some fun and enjoy your bike and thanks for joining us on this uh, winter winter sunday morning Love you all. Thanks for being part of Indian Rider Radio After Hours, and thank you for joining us as well. (laughs) For more of this race conversation and the rest of the Indian and Harley-Davidson discussions that you can enjoy in full at IndianRiderRadio.com. And remember, ride hard, ride fast, and say hi to somebody you don't know. Peace.